Uh, go on. Good. More, good morning. Thank you for coming to the press briefing. Attending the press briefing, we have uh, Mr. John Lee, Chief Executive, Mr. Eric Chan, Chief Secretary for Administration, Mr. Chris Tang, Secretary for Security, Professor Lo Chung Mao, Secretary for Health, Secretary for Transport and Logistics, Mr. Lam Sai Hong, and also Dr. Choi Yok Lin, Secretary for Education. The Chief Executive will say a few words, and then the other uh, um, secretaries and directors will also say a few words, and then they will take questions from the floor. Please limit yourself to two questions each. Now, uh, over to the Chief Executive. Good morning. I now announce that Hong Kong and the mainland will, from the 6th of February, that is next Monday, resume normal travel fully. That means, one, all boundary crossing points will no longer have a cap on the daily number of passengers, uh, of, of um, travelers. Uh, there is no need to make booking. You can go freely um, across the BCP. And secondly, we will uh, abolish the PCR test arrangement. There is no longer any need to do PCR test or any other test. So you could, um, you know, travel anytime as you wish. Thirdly, all boundary crossing points will be reopened. That means we will open in addition the Lao Wu BCP, Hang Yun Wei Lian Tong BCP, and also the Lok Ma Chao Huang Gang BCP. As for the um, cargo um, tra um, transportation service uh, for the uh, Shatao Kok BCP, it will also be resumed. And then uh, for we will also abolish the requirement for RAT for uh, rifles from Macau to Hong Kong. In other words, people from Macau could, uh, uh, people between Hong Kong and Macau could travel freely anytime as they wish. As for overseas travel arrangement, at a, on the same day, non-Hong Kong residents will no longer have to show proof of vaccination. That means for overseas travelers who have not been vaccinated, they could travel to Hong Kong. For arrivals from overseas and Taiwan, um, there is uh, the RAT requirement because we will have full resumption of normal travel between Hong Kong and the mainland. There will be huge number of people um, crossing the boundaries and we want to keep risk under control. So therefore we will still keep the RAT requirement for some time so we could observe the development and then we review the policy. Starting from the 8th of January, we started orderly resumption of uh, normal travel between Hong Kong and the mainland. Uh, Mem families were able to re be reunited and um, business, retail, catering, and many other sectors have um, been revitalized. We have seen vibrant economic activities. People have been much happier since. And starting from next Monday, the 6th of February, there will be full resumption of normal travel between Hong Kong and the mainland. That means they will, uh, they will further promote um, exchanges between people and also promote economic activities. And yesterday, we launched a major global publicity campaign, Hello Hong Kong. In 2023, Hong Kong will become even more vibrant and there will be um, more activities in the community and there will be more happiness among the people. The mainland will also resume uh, travel group arrangement. The uh, relevant uh, culture and, and tourism bureau of the mainland will be in um, communication with the culture, sports and tourism bureau as soon as possible so they can resume the uh, uh, tra group travel to Hong Kong. I'm grateful to the um, State Council, the um, com Health uh, Commission, and uh, also the um, Guangdong Provincial Governments and Shenzhen Municipal Governments for their support and for doing much to prepare for the resumption of, food tr uh, of uh, travel. I would also like to thank all colleagues at the BCPs for making much preparation for the resumption. 
uh, there, there are co uh, especially the colleagues of the co coordination group on resumption of normal travel have worked um, um, diligently to make this possible. And now I have fulfilled my pledge uh, in my election manifesto as I ran for the election of the chief executive. I'm able to now resume, uh, see the resumption of uh, full, uh, of, of normal travel. So I'm really happy. Now I invite uh, the chief secretary for administration and other um, directors bureau to tell you more about uh, the, the work and arrangement. Good morning, uh, members of the public and the media. Now, as the chief executive pointed out, um, um, we have uh, the HASRG government has had discussions with the central authorities, the Guangdong provincial government and the Sunjian municipal government, and we will start full resumption of normal travel from next Monday. Now, um, after the chief executive returned from Beijing at the end of the year and brought back news of resumption of travel, so uh, the coordination group on resumption of normal travel was uh, set up and we worked um, uh, ceaselessly to uh, work towards the ultimate goal of a full resumption of travel. So we've been working in an orderly manner. Now the first phase of resumption started on the uh, start. First phase of uh, travel resumption started on the eighth of January. Since then, we have kept in close discussion and communication with the resident authorities on the mainland. We have also made uh, adjustments and um, responded to change to different needs as, uh, as necessary. For example, we have um, stepped up the dissemination of information and also because of the Chinese New Year, there was a strong demand for travel quotas. So uh, we have um, increased the quota arrangement uh, during the Chinese New Year. And for uh, children under the age of three, there's no need for them to undergo PCR tests and also we have increased the number of uh, uh, southbound and northbound tickets of the express rail service. And then uh, from the 8th of January to yesterday, the 2nd of February, 770,000 people traveled north backwards to the, uh, traveled north to the mainland and some 700,000 people traveled south to Hong Kong. They made use of the various um, opened BCPs and that's helped to foster exchanges between the two places. We have reviewed the um, first the operation of the first phase of um, res travel resumption, and we have also considered all risk factors. We believe we are now uh, we now have the condition to uh, resume full travel. I'd like to highlight a few points. Uh, firstly, from the sixth of February, all boundary cross control points will be reopened, and there will be no longer a daily quota. As for the low wu. BCP, Hang Yun, Wai, um, Lan Tong, uh, BCP, and the Lok Ma Chao BCP will be uh, open. And for the Sha Tao Kwok BCP, cargo services will resume too. Uh, these are the new BCBs to be open. As for uh, the other existing BCBs already in operation, they will remain in operation as usual. And then for all the uh, ex um, operational BCPs, uh, and then for those that are going by the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge or the newly reopened uh, land BCPs, of all travelers no longer need to make online booking in advance. The uh, Guangdong and other mainland authorities and us, we will continue to um, step up our rehearsal uh, drills and to make sure that we are fully prepared and all the BCPs will operate uh, smoothly when they open. And then the coordination group will continue to coordinate the, uh, with the uh, operators of um, different transport services, um, both all, you know, such as land, uh, sea and air travel services to make sure everything is in order. In a moment, uh, the Secretary for Transport and Logistics and the Secretary uh, uh, will be giving you more details about the travel arrangement or transportation arrangement. And then second point, starting from the 6th of February, all uh, persons traveling to uh, and from uh, to, uh, between the Hong Kong mainland will no longer have to do a PCR test at, within 48 hours of travel. Because the epidemic is now under control, we believe we are in the position to relax the testing requirement to uh, facilitate travel between Hong Kong and the mainland as far as possible. As for those, um, 
uh, of, as for transit travelers, that is uh, for those uh, who ha are in transit or who have been overseas, including uh, Taiwan, seven days before traveling between Hong Kong and mainland, they will still have to produce a PCR test result uh, within 48 hours of travel. As for those aged under three, they will still be exempted. In a moment, the Secretary for Health will give you the um, medical um, justification for this arrange, relaxed arrangement. And then starting from the third point, starting from the 8th of February, note it's the 8th of February, where there will be orderly resumption of um, travel by cross-boundary students to come back for face-to-face -face classes. The um, arrangement will be in two phases. Uh, firstly, from the 8th of uh, February, we'll we will cover secondary students. And starting from the 22nd of Feb February, the arrangement will extend to primary school students, uh, kindergarten students, also special school students. The Education Bureau decides to um, resume cross-boundary travel for students in two phases because we have to consider whether children are able to take care of themselves and also the relevant support uh, services such as uh, cross-boundary bus services and so on. We want to make sure that um, students are able to resume face-to-face -face classes in a safe and convenient manner. Um, Education Bureau will continue to liaise closely with um, the uh, school bus operators to make sure there is a suitable support for them. In a moment, the Secretary for Education will be giving you more details about the class resumption arrangement. On the whole, I will continue to lead the coordination on resumption of normal travel and with the Guangdong Provincial Government and the Sanjian Municipal Government and all other relevant authorities will keep in close communication. Um, um, at the beginning of the year, I have proposed that there should be four um, important points to bear in mind as we resume through travel, and we will make sure that happens. Thank you. Secretary for Security, okay. good morning. I will be talking about um, some arrangement at the BCPs. As the Chief Executive and Chief Secretary pointed out, starting from the 6th of February, we will be opening up more BCPs. So all BCPs will be open. That includes the Low Wu. Lantong, Hang Yun Wai, Lok Ma Chao, Huang Gong, and also Sha Tau Kok BCPs. This will be fully reopened. And then the opening hours will be the same as uh, before the pandemic. That is for Lo Wu, it will be open from 6.30 a.m. to uh, midnight. Huang Kong, Lok Ma Chao, they will remain open 24 hours as before. Uh, so the Lantong, Hang Yun Wai BCP will be open from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. All clearance uh, services, uh, for example, if uh, certain BCPs allow a uh, private car clearance, uh, the, such services will be resumed too. As for the Shatao Kwok um, BCP, cargo services will be resumed. Uh, and initially, we will allow uh, cars um, transporting coffins to park to, to, uh, first. And then the opening hours will be from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. After full resumption of travel, all BCBs no longer have any online booking arrangement and travelers no need, will no longer need to make a booking in advance to uh, travel between Hong Kong and the mainland. And then there is also no need to produce um, PCR test result within 24, 48 hours of travel. Now, uh, the State Council uh, has arrangement or requirement in relation to joint infection and prevention control. And that is, so for those uh, who have said uh, overseas or in Taiwan within seven days of travel, they will still have to uh, produce a negative result of PCR test within, uh, that would, that's within 48 hours of travel. And then they need to make, they have to go through a special uh, lane and they have to make declaration of their results. Now, the SAR government and general public have been longing for re full resumption of uh, travel. And uh, we and the bureau, my bureau and the discipline services will make all necessary preparation to ensure there is smooth uh, resumption of travel. And then we will deploy sufficient manpower at the various uh, BCPs to make sure that uh, immigration and clearance uh, services will be um, provided smoothly. The immigration department, the customs is excised. So We'll work with the Education Bureau, the Transport Department, and the MTR 
uh, to carry out drills. Actually, they've carried out drills on the 1st of February. They make sure, will make sure that um, travel will be resumed in a safe, orderly, and efficient manner. And then the uh, 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 the Reverend Departments will work together with um, the Immigration Department, Transport Department, and make sure everything is in order. And there is a um, command sent a joint command center. If necessary, we'll make the uh, respond uh, proactively to make sure uh, traffic and transport uh, uh, remain uh, fine. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, travelers are able to uh, pass the BCP in a quick and fast, safe and efficient manner. I'd like to make a number of reminders. First, the uh, Lantau Hang Yun Wai BCP uh, started um, cargo services in August. The, for the first time, we are um, providing passenger clearance services. Uh, members of the public could uh, make use of public transport services or private cars, or they could use the um, um, a, a pedestrian bypass to get to the BCP. There are also car parks at the BCP for travelers going to the east of Shenzhen and Guangdong. You could uh, make use of this brand new BCP at um, Hong Yun Wai. Second point, the Low Wu BCP will resume full services from the 6th of February. Now there are improvement works being carried out at the Low Wu BCP. So it may affect um, the traveling time. If you make use of the low Wu BCP, I would suggest that you allow more time. Or you could also consider using other BCPs such as the Lockmar Charles Spur um, line uh, BCP. Third point, for the Lockmar Charles Hong Kong, Hong Kong uh, BCP, now uh, there is um, redevelopment of the Hong Kong BCP, the uh, old uh, Hong Kong, um, clearance building has been demolished, so the Shenzhen government has set up a temporary uh, BCP at the on the Hong, Hong Kong side nearby. So services uh, clearance services should not be affected. But uh, maybe you're not familiar with the uh, Hong Kong um, clearance uh, facility. So again, I would suggest that you allow more time for your travel. Now uh, we have to. Um, um, uh, comply with the um, customs requirements on the Shenzhen side. So for uh, travelers um, going to to Shenzhen, you should uh, still go to the um, website of the Shenzhen authorities to um, make um, registration in advance. And so you could declare, uh, make your health declaration in advance, and then you don't need to uh, make the health declaration uh, at the PCP that will speed up your the clearance. And also, uh, um, if you only do the um, uh, uh, scan the code and so on at the BCP, it will may lead to congestion. So uh, we would like to remind the public to complete all declaration beforehand if you travel to the mainland. So that's all from me. Now I'll pass on to Mr. Lam Sai Hong. Secretary for Transport and Logistics. Thank you, Chief Executive. Good morning, members of the public and media friends. I will talk about the transportation um, arrangements after the full resumption of cross-boundary travel. Starting next Monday, all boundary control points will resume full operation. The Bureau and the transport departments have liaised with public transport operators to ensure that there is sufficient transportation services to take travelers to and from the boundary control points during the operating hours. With the removal of the pre-departure PCR test requirements and also the lifting of the prescribed quota for passengers, we expect a huge surge in traveling demand. The Emergency and Accident Coordination Center of the Transport Department will operate at the maximum um, capacity and also liaise with franchise bus operators and the MTR company to monitor the transport situation. When necessary, we will enhance transportation services as BCPs, and we will also arrange for extra manpower to serve passengers. Concerning the newly reopened boundary control points, like the Secretary for Security mentioned, there is work in progress as the law will control points. It may lengthen the waiting time for customs clearance. 
we have helped the MTRC to make preparation for resumption of operation of the law rule control points. Depending on the passenger volume, we will adjust the number of departures to divert travelers flow. And also we will remind travelers of um, issues before um, crossing the boundary control points. And we will also advise passengers to make use of other border control points to cross the border. Now for the Hyun Wai Liantang control points, this is the first time that um, passengers can cross the boundary control points after its, after its opening. Travelers can make use of taxis, public um, franchise buses, and also public minibuses. And also travelers can drive private cars and also use the um, dedicated channel to go through custom clearance. And also cross-boundary drivers with um, the regular monthly quota can also make use of the quota to cross the boundary. The transport department is going to upload the relevant information on our website. Concerning the Huanggang Loma Zhou control point, it will resume um, the, the Huanggang uh, bus, which run 24 hours a day, will resume like before the epidemic, as well as other means of transport. Concerning the information on transport services for crossing the BCPs, we will upload the information and schedule on our website. And also we will upload the information on our e-mobility app, as well as disseminate the information to media outlets so that, passing, so that travelers will be familiar with the uh, arrangements. Secretary for Health, please. Thank you, Chief Executive. Good morning, members of the public and media friends. The CE and the Chief Secretary for Administration has announced the arrangements of full resumption of cross-boundary travel with the mainland. It includes cancelling the pre-departure PCR test requirements. However, um, for some for northbound travelers, um, the uh, RAT test will still be required. And also, um, Macau travelers, we don't, ha don't have to do a um, RAT test before coming to Hong Kong. And also, overseas travelers will not have to present a vaccination record before coming to Hong Kong. Now, I would like to report to you the latest developments of the epidemic in Hong Kong, as well as the risk assessments, as well as emergency um, response measures after the full resumption of cross boundary travel. After three years, we have entered a new stage of the epidemic and our control model has evolved. Starting the 30th of January this year, we have canceled the issuance of isolation order to patients. And also the health ministry of the central people's government has announced that the epidemic has entered a low infection uh, level, and it is on a steady trend of decline. Starting the 8th of January, after we Im implemented the first phase of resumption of cross-boundary travel with the mainland, we have observed the following. First, between the 8th of January and the 29th of January, the number of confirmed cases in Hong Kong has dropped from 14,000 per day to 3,000 per day, that is an 80% drop. It shows that since the first phase res um, resumption of cross-boundary cross travel, the epidemic situation has not worsened. On the contrary, the number of confirmed cases has dropped. And also from our sewage, um, from a sewage surveillance, it shows that the per capita vi um, viral load has dropped from 330,000 um, units to uh, by um, 90 percent to uh, some 20,000 um, units. It wasn't adversely affected by the first stage of resumption. And also the imported case um, ratio accounts for only 2.6 percent of our total number of confirmed cases. Among the imported cases, mainland cases only accounts for 16 percent. It shows that mainland travelers um, have a lower risk. 
in terms of public health service, the number of hospitalization because of COVID-19 has been on the drop. For patients visiting our designated clinics as well as um, the A and ED, the number has not been affected by significantly by the first phase resumption. These data after the 8th of January shows that the resumption of cross-boundary travel has not worsened our epidemic control. We understand that the flow of the number of travelers will definitely rise after the resumption of cross-boundary travel. We will work hard to ensure that the public health care system is not affected. And firstly, the hospital authority will maintain close liaison with healthcare services providers to ensure that we have the capacity to cope, including a steady supply of medical supplies and also formulation of effective response plan and also activation of, diff of various um, bad deployment scheme uh, based on the developments of the epidemic, as well as um, making use of telemed telemedicine, um, tele um, consultation. The hospital authority has stepped up its level of services to support confirmed patients in the community. More than 70 uh, GOPCs are offering treatments to confirmed COVID patients, including prescription of oral COVID medications. Quotas would be reserved for high-risk patients. Most private clinics and hospitals are offering treatments to COVID-19 patients as well. At this stage, private doctors can engage in direct procurements with um, the pharmaceutical companies for the two authorized oral medications. And also doctors registered under the e-health system can obtain COVID-19 drugs procured by the governments to uh, for free prescription to eligible patients. We will endeavor to ensure that our healthcare medical system can cope while we are resuming normalcy and we will protect people's health um, after the boundaries are reopened. Secretary for Education. Thank you, Chief Executive, and good morning. The Education Bureau has been in close liaison with the education sector. We have been working with other departments to provide facilitation for the return of cross-boundary students. In response to the measures just announced, we plan to allow cross-boundary students to come back to Hong Kong for face-to-face -face lesson in an orderly manner in two phases. In terms of the time frame, at the initial stage of the cross-boundary cross resumption, there will be very busy uh, traffic. And also considering the resumption of full day uh, in-person classes for um, different students, we have decided that in two days after the resumption, that is starting the 8th of February, cross-boundary secondary students would be arranged to come back to Hong Kong for school. For primary students and also kindergarten students, they will begin to come back to Hong Kong for face-to-face -face lessons starting the 22nd of February. The Education Bureau supports... Uh, the Education Bureau and also stakeholders consider that it is very important to make advanced preparation, including getting um, the, the relevant permits and also um, come back to Hong Kong for schools in an orderly and progressive manner. That would be the safest um, arrangement. The Education Bureau would notify parents via schools of the customs clearance arrangements and also the transport um, arrangements at different border uh, boundary control points so that students can select the most appropriate control points for crossing the border. In terms of the v in terms of um, the um, travel documents, we have been reminding students since last year that they should renew their um, travel permits to prepare for the reopening of boundary of a boundary. And also, we have been starting. June last year, we have been reminding schools with cross-boundary students to remind the students to renew their permits. With the new arrangements, we will also provide facilitation measures for cross-boundary students to get a travel permit, including 
allowing schools to apply on behalf of the students um, for renewal of um, permits. If the documentations are proper, then the immigration department will provide will provide um, expedited um, handling for these uh, applications. For cross boundary students, we want to facilitate um, the movement of um, cross boundary coach buses. So we will work with other departments to handle application by school buses operators. Now, because of the long hiatus um, in schooling in Hong Kong by cross boundary students, a lot of adjustments and uh, adaptation will uh, be needed. We have reminded schools to pay attention to the emotional and uh, mental health of students to help them adjust to the resumption of schooling. The Education Bureau has created a dedicated website to help cross-boundary students to adjust to the resumption of um, in-person uh, school life. They include guidelines and advice on how to to expand your expand um, the um, expand um, the, uh, the the circle as well as how to adjust to school life. We are looking forward to cross boundary students to come back to schools in Hong Kong and enjoy an exciting school life. The Education Bureau will continue to maintain close liaison with the schools as well as stakeholders to offer support for cross boundary students. Thank you. Now the floor is open to questions. If you wish to ask questions, please raise your hand. And when it's your turn to speak, please use the microphone that we pass you. First, please identify your organization and also please limit yourself to two questions each. Uh, the gentleman on the left on the front row. Good morning, Chief Executive and uh, Secretaries. I'm from the uh, CC, uh, Central TV. Now, after full resumption of normal travel, um, or rather, uh, as, as we uh, prepare for full resumption of travel, um, what has been done by different uh, departments and, and what about the frontline staff? How do you coordinate their effort? Now, yesterday, your second question, you launched the Hello Hong Kong global campaign yesterday. Uh, what do you think are the unique advantages of Hong Kong that will bring visitors to Hong Kong? Now, you want to welcome visitors from all parts of the world. So what preparation have you done for that? Thank you. on uh, planning for the full resumption of travel. Now, I reported to, to duty at uh, Beijing, and then the central authorities gave me instructions that we could start um, making the preparation. And so immediately, we set up the coordination group on resumption of normal travel, chaired by the chief secretary for administration. Now, the CS, um, the second highest ranking official in the SARG government leads this group and there are 15 other um, bureau heads and department heads involved. So that's why the whole uh, the whole SAR government is fully dedicated to the task and at every uh, step of the way we've been working carefully, uh, taking care of all the details. Now, I in this whole exercise, I'm grateful to the CS and his team for considering several points uh, because I've set certain targets first. It must be orderly, safe and smooth resumption. We see that uh, the target was achieved on the 8th of January. Why did we manage that? Because we made adequate preparations. Secondly, we've strengthened the safety co uh, coefficient. And thirdly, uh, we've done sufficiently in terms of uh, information dissemination. In fact, we keep improving this aspect of work too. And then in the design of the whole system, we were able to consider fully the urgent needs after resumption of travel. So that's why initially we set a period of eight weeks for uh, the quota arrangement. So we will we, we let, let people know that half of the population, some 3.6, million will be able to go to the mainland so they don't need to become too anxious because we don't want everybody to rush at the border at the same time. It won't be so good because it actually may not meet, so meet the travel needs of individuals and also there could be problems arising at the BCP. 
So we won't, don't want to rush, and that's why we made early in uh, uh, dissemination of the information. And sec, and then uh, I'm grateful to the main authorities. We just before the Chinese New Year, almost every day, the CS and his uh, colleagues were in discussion with the mainland authorities. Uh, if necessary, they would make adjustment. If they, there's need for dissemination information, they would do so at once. And we uh, heard different demands. For example, uh, for children under three years of age. Can we have a discussion with the main authorities to remove the testing requirement? And after discussion, the arrangement, the requirement was removed. And secondly, we heard the the, the voices of the people about uh, express rail service. And so that's why the Transport and Logistics Bureau had daily discussion with the mainland, right from mainland authorities. And so eventually we were able to resume ex our, our service. So where we could increase the quota, we tried to do so. Before the Chinese New Year, we knew there would be strong demand. So after discussion with the mainland authorities, we increased the um, daily quota places. So we could see that uh, if uh, people wish to travel the mainland, they would be able to do so. And so that's why I believe uh, the arrangement uh, met um, my requirements. I always say that if we want any operation to be successful, we have to make quick decisions and policies, and we have to have precise implementation. I'm grateful to all colleagues for dedicating themselves to the task. In fact, during the holiday, they never took a break. They worked you know, really diligently. I'm grateful to them, and also grateful to all the residents, authorities on the mainland, in particular the Guangdong Provincial Government and the Shenzhen Municipal Government for you know working very hard on these issues too another point now we are going for full resumption of uh, travel we're also planning for um economic full economic recovery and so just yesterday we launched this major global campaign to bring visitors uh, from overseas to Hong Kong. Hong Kong has many advantages. First of all, we have a very nice um, scenic sports and tourist attractions, including the uh, Palace Museum. The Amplus Museum too is um, um, very much uh, well praised. And then we have other, uh, um, uh, this, we have theme parks, we have country parks, we have many, many different types of tourist destinations, and they are all very popular. Hong Kong is also a city of mega events. Many mega events are held here. Just yesterday, I mentioned a number of events such as the marathon, the Hong Kong Sevens, and so on. And also Hong Kong is uh, a well-known maize venue. Uh, it's also a um, center of um, East cultural exchanges between the East and the West. And also we are ranked uh, the freest economy in the world. So many events and conferences can be held in Hong Kong. We have, we're also giving out uh, 500,000 air tickets. I believe that would be very appealing. So what, what are we doing in terms of preparation here? I actually, we're all ready. We're all well prepared. You know, um, friends from the tourism sector, um, also for those promoting uh, trade, conventions and so on, and even the airport is all ready. So that's why yesterday at the launch ceremony, we had uh, colleagues from the uh, Trade Development Council, the Airport Authority, the Tourism Board and so on. In fact, for our catering, retail sectors, and even everyone in Hong Kong, I'm sure they're all ready to promote Hong Kong. So for every visitor who comes to Hong Kong, they will be able to, sh to feel our vitality and our hospitality. Hong Kong will certainly be a good host. So for our ec economic activities in, the 2020, in, in 2023, and for the major exchanges um, and uh, between the people and of uh, trade, uh, I'm very confident about all that. Thank you. Second question at the far end over there, please. I'm from the Hong Kong Economic Times. Two questions. First one about um, um, prevention 
in infection control. Now, uh, you confirmed that um, the epidemic is uh, under control even with the uh, resumption of cross-boundary travel. But are there other measures to uh, prevent imported cases? How can you convince the public that the uh, pandemic will not uh, um, um, go up again? And when, you know, for all, all the facilities, um, say in the loop area, when will the normal uses be resumed or will, will, if they are to be demolished? This is a waste of money. Uh, I think you've asked two questions already. Well, I'll answer part of your questions and then I'll invite the Secretary for Health to tell you more about um, infection control. Now for our, our epidemic control measures, uh, we want to do things in an orderly manner with Chris uh, under control. It, uh, the measures must also be science-based and be precise. This has been our policy since the uh, assumption of office for this government, and we could see or see the results. So it's been effective. Now, starting from the 8th of January, we started resumption of cross-boundary travel, and we've been monitoring very closely the epidemic situation at the moment. The Secretary for Health could share with you more data. So you can see that uh, for our policies, um, they've been effective. And then we've also enhanced the uh, safety coefficient. By that we mean, it means that we are doing more preparation than usual. Because we have uh, raised the co safety coefficient, so we have more resource, we are deploying more resources with better results. In terms of manpower deployment too, because of the higher safety coefficient, we also make sure that we will have full and rapid response as necessary. So in terms of a policy making implementation, we are actually very much confident. And another point, I said before that uh, because of the, um, um, the need for, you know, community isolation facilities and so on were at the peak of the pandemic. So all these uh, many facilities were provided. And now I've invited the financial secretary, the deputy financial secretary to review the all these facilities and see how we should deal with them in light of the current situation. First, we've designed on uh, the reserve capacity. You, as you can see, we are now able to control the, the epidemic. Of course, there could be unexpected circumstances around the world, or there could be a new disease or new pandemic around the world. And these are, you know, scenarios that we cannot predict, but um, based on the current data and trend, we will have to decide on the size of the reserve capacity and therefore facilities that we no longer need we will have to consider what to do with them for example some of the facilities could perhaps be converted to other short-term uses some perhaps could be used as youth hostels or perhaps some facilities could be used for short-term activities such as youth activities exchange activities and so on Now, we had to provide a large number of facilities in uh, an emergency, emergency at a time. So these uh, facilities were built for emergency purposes. And by, by going by that standard, it means we will have to spend much in repair and maintenance if we want to keep the facilities. So that's why we have to consider how we could make use of these facilities effectively without um, spending large amount of money on repair and maintenance. And then also at certain locations, you have to be careful if it's a rainy or typhoon season, maybe there could be flooding or the risk of flooding at least. So maybe it's not suitable to use certain facilities on a long-term basis if they're in such locations. So that's why the Deputy Financial Secretary will have to review each and every facility to see if uh, there could be other suitable uses. So after he's completed the review, he will submit a report for my consideration. 
And then, of course, we'll let you know what you will do with these facilities. Next, I invite the Secretary for Health to answer your other question. Thank you for your question. This is very important. Uh, it's a good question, actually. It shows exactly that uh, the virus has not um, vanished altogether. So we still need to bear this in mind. But then in the course of um, development of the pandemic, we see that the viruses have mutated and then our immunity barrier has um, been enhanced. And also um, the uh, response capacity in the healthcare system and in the government as a whole has been enhanced. So that's why starting from the um, from July 2022, we have started adopting an orderly and gradual approach in uh, leading Hong Kong back to normalcy. And so that's a strategy we adopt as we made adjustments to our control measures. That is, uh, uh, we would first collect sufficient data and see if the data supports um, relax further relaxation every step of the way. So. Um, for example, uh, starting from the 8th of January, we've resumed uh, cross-boundary travel. We've looked at the number of arrivals and we see that it's not affected our epidemic. And then from the 6th of February, when there's full resumption of travel, we will continue to monitor closely the epidemic situation. As for our healthcare system, public healthcare system, that is, you know, the uh, Department of Health, the hospital authority, or even in the private sector, private hospitals, private clinics, and so on, they will all be um, enhancing their capacity. So um, we could respond, therefore, should there be fluctuations in the um, in infection numbers. For example, at the beginning of uh, the, uh, at the end of December and early, um, January this year, we've seen um, search in our rifles and still uh, uh, we have been able to make, to provide uh, normal services so when there's a search in service demand, but still we were able to provide normal service. Thank you. If I may remind you, please limit yourself to two questions. Next, please. On the right, uh, the third row, the uh, one at the far end, please. BNP, um, the first question, why is the pre-departure RAT still necessary when there is practically no enforcement? Isn't it unfair if Hong Kong residents are no longer required to report their RAT results and do any isolation, but visitors have to do so? And the second question, would the government reconsider setting up an independent commission of inquiry to investigate the handling of the pandemic or any other way that would ensure the transparency? Because um, Mr. Lee, when you dismissed the calls to um, set up the COI, there are actually backlash from society and many experts do not agree. Will you consider that? Thank you. Well, first of all, the RAT requirement is only applicable to people that uh, visits Hong Kong from over, uh, returns to Hong Kong or come to Hong Kong to visit. Uh, we require an RAT, RAT for the purpose of ensuring that, well, uh, any risk uh, from overseas uh, can be monitored and controlled. This is really for the benefit of controlling uh, the uh, spread of the disease. It's really for ensuring uh, that uh, the public health is protected, is for the people's overall good. Obviously, I want to resume uh, everything to normalcy as soon as possible, but I have to do it in a balanced and controlled manner, as I have already said many times, so that uh, I don't have to roll back. And the reason for keeping it for a while is also that uh, the uh, normal travel resumption with the mainland will involve a lot of people uh, traveling across the boundary, and that will be a big number. And in order to ensure that we will be able to control the risk, then I think uh, we should keep the RAT requirement for people coming into Hong Kong from overseas uh, so as to protect uh, the overall public health of the people, for the good of the people. But I will review it uh, after a period of time, uh, particularly after we have uh, resumed uh, normal travel with the mainland, 
electoral period and looking at the data and then we'll decide at the next step. Regarding the suggestion of doing an independent investigation, my position has been made very clear. Uh, we should do lesson learning, but we have been doing lesson learning since day one of the assumption of office of this government. And we are doing it very regularly, otherwise we will not have introduced different measures uh, to resume normalcy. And this is a continued exercise that it, and will be done by responsible departments if there's a need uh, for uh, any uh, opinions from other people, then of course the responsible department will uh, will talk to those people. Uh, if you look at what we have done, this continuation of lesson learning is the doctrine of this government in the different policy areas. So in order to ensure that we will be able to deal with uh, future challenges, future risks uh, in regard to uh, this disease, uh, we will be summarizing and also uh, for those success measures, uh, we will regularize it and update it into, into our guidelines and response plan. That will be most practical and also most effective. I also want to focus uh, the energy of the government uh, on developing the economy. So I'm doing this uh, in a very pragmatic manner. So on the one hand, we'll do our lesson learning, we'll, up, we'll update what has been uh, good practices and successful practices into our guidelines so that we will be able to deal with um, future challenges. And at the same time, the government uh, will be working to ensure that Hong Kong developed economically uh, and also to ensure that we remain competitive. My position is very clear. We'll do lesson learning, but we'll do lesson learning as we always do uh, within the government uh, in the course with, as we deal with this pandemic. Hi, and I'm also, on. I must also emphasize, there are a lot of people who disagree with the idea of doing an independent investigation and agree with my position. Hi, Tai Man. Next question, please. The lady in the middle. Good morning, Chief Executive and Secretaries. The first question about uh, Lian Tang. Hong Yun Wai BCP, this is a key a project, and this is the first time the border control point is in operation. So what discussion has been made with the Shenzhen um, Authority about the Hello Hong Kong promotion campaign? Yesterday, we have heard a lot of measures to attract visitors from the mainland overseas. So after the full resumption of cross-boundary travel, are there any measures to attract the mainland travelers in particular. I will take your second question first. And for your first question, I would invite the Secretary for Security to answer it. Full resumption of cross-boundary travel is the aspiration of many people in the mainland, and as well as those who are working in the mainland. They would like to come to Hong Kong because we have a number of attractions. We are a very robust city, and there are lots of commercial and business opportunities. We are a very diverse, um, diversified um, place. We have a lot of tourist attractions, including the Palace Museum, the M Plus, and a lot of mega events happening, including Hong Kong Seven, and also Hong Kong Marathon. We are also a mice hub in the region. In terms of mice tourism, we are also very attractive. Friends in the mainland can join the, can apply for a free air ticket. Since um, 
tourism is gradually resuming in the mainland, there will be mainland tour groups to Hong Kong. So in terms of individual uh, traveling and also um, tourist group traveling, there will be a lot of um, opportunities in terms of the retail industry, catering, convention and exhibition, and commerce. We are already, the sectors are ready. Because of the full resumption of cross-boundary travel, I will also lead a team of government officials to visit the mainland beside Beijing. We will conduct visits in the GBA and we will conduct study visits with the hope to play a more important role in terms of developing the GBA. In the process, we will promote communication and interaction between the people of Hong Kong and the mainland in terms of business cooperation as well as a cultural exchange. There will also be student exchange activities. In general, there will be a comprehensive campaign in terms of promoting um, exchange activities with the mainland. After the resumption of cross-boundary travel, we will reach out to our counterparts in the mainland in efforts to create new opportunities. We welcome friends in the mainland as well as people working in the mainland to come to Hong Kong to explore the opportunities or simply just to chill out and um, enjoy um, the time in Hong Kong. Now, may I invite the, sec the Secretary for Security to talk about the arrangements as the Lian Tang Heung Yu Wai control point. Thank you, Chief Executive. Now, the Lian Tang Heung Yu Wai BCP is very important in terms of um, cross boundary travel in the GBA. It is a strategic position. in terms of the ease-in, ease-out travel. It is very important and convenient for travelers to travel to Guangdong and Shenzhen East. Now, in terms of the, um, the comprehensive strategy, it is a very important BCP. And also, it is very important um, in terms of cargo um, customs clearance and also um, travelers clearance. And it is also a BCP with huge capacity. Besides public transport means, travelers can drive their own cars and park the vehicles in the car park and then um, go through customs clearance. They can also make use of a de designated um, pedestrian tunnel to cross the boundary. This is a brand new facilitation measures. So this is the advantage of using the Lian Heng Yun Wai BCP. Thank you. Next question, please. Okay. To the left at the back, the lady there. I'm from Singtao Daily. Good morning. First question. So next week, there will be full resumption to normal arrangement. Now for uh, community testing stations and uh, um, vaccination centers, when will they be abolished and uh, when will there will be full resumption of high-speed rail service? Now, the CE said uh, you wouldn't uh, do a commission of inquiry, but then uh, some experts have asked for, for a commercial of, of inquiry. So uh, I want to ask the Secretary for Health, what is your view on that as a professional? Chief Executive. Well, many people have different views. Some uh, may have their own ideas and some agree with me entirely. So I think we have to look at it in an objective manner first. I will invite the Secretary for Transport and Logistics. 
to tell you more about the uh, operation of the express rail service. And then I'll invite Mr. Uh, Secretary for Health to tell you about um, PCR uh, testing uh, facilities. First on express rail service, as you know, it's uh, been suspended for three years. In mid-January, we started uh, resuming some rail, express rail services to Guangzhou and so on. You might recall before the pandemic, um, long distance rail service go, went all the way to Beijing, Shanghai. To the east, it went to Fujian. And then uh, to the west, went to Chengdu, Chongqing. So there were many, many destinations. Uh, if I recall correctly, there were over 50 cities served by our express rail service. So that's why we would need, need a little bit more time to talk to the relevant uh, units and cities on the mainland on the resumption of express rail service. We've started discussion with them. And as to how long it will take, it depends on the both part uh, on the both sides. So, but we will uh, work proactively to resume service as soon as possible. Secretary for Health. Well, earlier when I answered the question, I said that the uh, virus has not vanished altogether. We still have COVID in the community, still uh, of concern to us. The, w the World Health Organization has also stressed that the COVID remains a public health concern, um, a, a public health emergency of international concern. Now, as for PCR tests, we still need to provide services on various fronts. Now, uh, for example, people have to travel overseas. Many countries still require PCR tests before departure. So we have to maintain the service as a uh, paid service. And then for uh, um, target groups, uh, say those working at residential care homes and hospitals, there is need for us to provide services for wh whoever who wants to take the test, they should be able to take the test. As to when we will make adjustment, it will depend on the, the pandemic. As for vaccination, it's of course some um, priority task for us. Now we are able to um, return to normalcy. Now, after all these years, vaccination is made a significant contribution so we need to keep our vaccination service and there are signs to show that um, there may be a need for regular vaccination to fight the COVID um, virus as to how regularly we should get vaccinated we'll leave it to the expert community to make recommendations in other countries for example in singapore they they suggest um getting vaccinated every six months and in the us um, it's annual vaccination so therefore we will have to keep up with our vaccination service of course we'll make adjustments in the light of um, the epidemic now you asked about my views on commission of inquiry i fully agree with the chief executive now we have kept improving our measures we also review our anti-epidemic measures um, in a periodic manner this is a direction adopted all around the world uh, before i have uh, described this approach as grouping along the way um that's um you know by grouping along the way that means that uh, we could not um uh, you know make advanced uh, plans we have to see how the epidemic evolves before we decide what to do i'm sure in future when there is another new virus or another new pandemic, we may very much, we may most likely have to adopt the same approach. That is, um, you know, every time there may be a different uh, virus, different health concern, and we will have to, you know, uh, respond accordingly. Now, in the healthcare sector, as we treat patients, when well, COVID is like a major illness uh, for the entire world, and in that, uh, the treatment process, we will keep making improvements and enhancements. Uh, so it's really not a question about um, doing um, independent inquiry at any particular stage. So that's all I'd like to say. If I may add, the, we've had this pandemic for three years. There is not the best practice or approach that's acceptable by all. 
secondly, we need to take stock of experience so we're able to respond to new challenges in future. I my view is the same as that of uh, others. We have to do that. It's just the the approach that is different. So it's a matter of how we take stock of experience. My approach is that we will keep taking stock of experience. We will keep enhancing our measures. We believe that is the most pragmatic and effective way. It is also the most cost effective. So there are different approaches, but it doesn't mean that the outcome will be very much different because we keep reviewing the situation. We keep enhancing the measures. So therefore, we will be able to do better on three fronts compared to other appro approaches. First, decisions are quick. Two, uh, implementation is precise. And three, the, uh, we'll see effective outcome. So it doesn't matter what measures or recommendations we have, we need to achieve these three targets. Otherwise, we cannot really address any um, crisis. So we need to do these three things, and then we need to have a system that will allow us to um, achieve these three targets. That's important. And also, we have another advantage under one country, two systems. We could work together with different uh, departments of the mainland uh, in terms of uh, resources provision. So with the advantage of one country, two systems, we are able to leverage on the advantage and resources of other cities. They could share these resources with us. In the past seven months, we kept um, taking stock of our experience. And I believe we have since come up with the most effective measures. And I'm very much confident that we will be able to face future challenges too, adopting the same approach. Uh, it's almost time, the last question to the right on the third row, um, the lady in white. I'm from Hong Kong 01. About um, removing the PCR test requirement uh, in the CSB website, we see that um, the most uh, most of the imported cases came from Maine, although you said it's just 60% earlier. Now, so we are talking about the place that um, may bring in, uh, may import the most cases to us. So you relax the requirement, but then for other places with lower risk, you are maintaining the RAT requirements. So what is the rationale for that? Second question. Now you, the, you said as long as you're able to make quick decisions, good, but you know, during SARS, the recommendation was that there's a need to set up a CAP or DHC to uh, monitor the epidemic, or there's a need to uh, um, prepare more resources. So as long as this, you could do that, it's fine. Is it the case that you don't need to consider the hardware and software for you to be better prepared for the next uh, for the next um, um, epidemic? Uh, I think you have asked two questions. Uh, you know, when there is an unknown virus in future, can you be sure that uh, there won't be again? You know, elderly patients. You know, um, uh, you know, freezing and passing away at hospitals and so on. I think with any major healthcare crisis or, or with any major crisis, actually, we have to consider the risk, the various factors. There is not a. Uh, um, single solution for all scenarios. Now you could uh, come up with a hundred um, uh, um, proposals, but then there could be uh, another new scenario that requires another different hundred solutions, for instance. So we've, we are faced with a crisis, we need to respond accordingly and we have to consider all the relevant factors and these factors could be different in each case. And uh, we are talking about returning to full normalcy and also, you know, um, keeping in tandem with the world in that respect. We've actually um, seen good experience to learn from overseas. Here we're talking about risk being under control. We all know that virus is still with us. But we know that the, the virus is less um, uh, dangerous now many people actually are asymptomatic even if they're infected. So that's why we have set up a system to make it one of the upper respiratory tract diseases. This is also the direction uh, for most other countries around the world. 
So under the circumstance, uh, we are returning to normal, see, but it doesn't mean that we don't face any risk. In other countries, all of a sudden, they may come up with measures that uh, every country is trying to strike a balance between risk control and return to normalcy. So we have now announced a full resumption of cross-boundary travel because we want to respond to the aspirations of most people in the community. And also we are moving in a direction of um, putting risk under control. So we do have imported cases as we mentioned earlier. In every country they have imported cases, but on the whole, the risks are under control. Now, everyone believes Hong Kong should um, return to normalcy. And so we want to do so in an orderly manner in, uh, in responding to people's aspirations. So this is how we look at the matter. And we can see that um, in the different phases of our work, um, uh, we are able to make uh, a suitable judgment as we respond to the wish of the public. Thank you. That's the end of the press conference. Thank you.